Motor Week is made possible by Tire Rack. Just this year, Honda, Hyundai, and Toyota all debuted production-ready hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, although initially they will only be available in limited areas. Things under the hood of a fuel cell vehicle look a little different than what you find under the hood of a gas or diesel vehicle. In fact, a fuel cell vehicle actually is an EV, but it makes its own electricity from hydrogen. There's no need to plug it in to recharge. To see just what one drives like, I jump behind the wheel of a Toyota Mirai sedan. Much like a traditional EV, things are very quiet and had me asking, is this thing even on? But with the popularity and petrol-hungry reputation of SUVs, it seemed only natural for me to check out this new hydrogen Hyundai Tucson as well. And again, the drive was very similar to a battery electric vehicle with that really quick get up and go. So why hydrogen over battery electric? For one, the time it takes to refuel. So it just takes a few minutes. Um, to fuel, and so there it's more similar to gasoline vehicles um, as opposed to charging the battery. Another plus for hydrogen vehicles, their range. The EPA estimate for the Toyota Mirai I drove is 312 miles. The Hyundai Tucson boasts 265 miles per tank, and each one of those miles is pollution free. The only kind of emissions that come out of hydrogen electric vehicles are a little bit of heat and H2O. Even considering the energy it takes to produce, deliver, store, and transport hydrogen, or what the Fuel Cell Technologies Office defines as well-to-wheel emissions, hydrogen comes out ahead. If you look at today's uh, gasoline vehicle, on uh, average, um, based on you know, all the assumptions, we have roughly almost about a pound of carbon emissions per mile of driving. If you're producing hydrogen from natural gas, there's about half of that in terms of emissions, uh, total well-to-wheels emissions. So why aren't we all driving hydrogen vehicles? Well, it starts with the high cost of the fueling stations, the fuel cell vehicles, and the hydrogen fuel itself. But the West Coast, California in particular, is making strides. And California, the state, has actually set aside funding specifically to install hydrogen stations. Similar to other alternative fuels, collaboration seems to be key in making hydrogen more mainstream. Take this fueling station in Washington, D.C. It's a partnership between the Department of Energy and the National Park Service. And with the station right in their backyard, the Greater Washington Region Clean Cities Coalition is making moves too, talking with D.C. government about purchasing hydrogen vehicles now that a station is logistically available. Washington, D.C. has, over the years, been an innovator as it related to alternative fuel programs. And I see, again, the District of Columbia government, the Department of Public Works, making some major efforts to bring hydrogen to the city. Other than California, the three automakers have yet to announce which market areas the fuel cell vehicles will be offered in next. But after my drives, there's no denying the potential and practicality of hydrogen-powered cars. So this time, the future of this future fuel looks like it may be much sooner than we thought.